Hello, hello, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to talk about a simple voltage-controlled amplifier, meaning an amplifier whose gain is controlled or programmed by an external voltage. And we are going to look at a JFET version of this. So here's where we need to begin, which is the transconductance curve for our JFET. Now I've got a normalized gate source voltage here across the bottom, so unity represents VGS off, and these numbers are fractions of VGS off. And on the vertical, we have normalized drain current. So again, unity is the maximum drain current, which is IDSS, and these numbers are fractions thereof. So we are going to look at a non-swamped common source JFET amplifier, the gain of which is GMRD inverting, right? The minus sign is inverting. So GM is the transconductance, RD being the AC drain resistance. Now the transconductance GM is found with this equation, which is GM0, the maximum transconductance, which occurs up here at IDSS, right? GM0, the zero in GM0 means VGS equals zero, okay? So it's a maximizing value there times this quantity, 1 minus VGS off, VGS being the point at which we're biased, and VGS off, of course, is the maximum value, the most negative value uh, for VGS on our FET, right? So GM0 and VGS off are constants. So what this is telling us is that the value of VGS will set up the value of GM, and of course, GM in turn sends up the value of gain. Now this curve, right, this typically referred to as a transconductance curve. If you take the, if you take the uh, slope of this, the first derivative of this curve, you get the transconductance. In other words, the change in drain current versus the change in gate source voltage. So the slope down here toward VGS off is very shallow, right? Down here, it's actually zero. So that would indicate GM is zero, and therefore the gain would be zero. And then as we go up, right, this is getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. This follows a square law, right? Parabola, part of a parabola. So up here is the steepest point, and therefore you get the highest GM over here, right? The highest slope, steepest slope, biggest GM, that's your GM zero, right? So when VGS is zero, you get one minus one, basically. Uh, excuse me, you get one minus zero, which is one times GM zero, so GM is GM0, it's the maximum value. So all we really have to do then is control the value of VGS off, control the bias sort of externally, right? So a simple way to do that is to simply throw in a control voltage, a DC voltage out here. Technically, this could be an AC voltage. Um, you could have a, a modulating kind of system, but I just want to look at a simple DC voltage. Um, so we would throw this in, bring this up and down, and this would be the control voltage. It is a negative potential. How does it work? Well, notice your source on the FET is right at ground. Now we need RG over here. I can't just connect the negative terminal of the power supply to the gate because when we do the AC analysis, this would short out and our signal would never get into the gate of the FET. So I do need a big resistor out here. Now, because it's a FET, right, the gate current is really, really small, maybe picoamps. So the voltage drop across RG is small enough to ignore. It is negligible. And we can therefore say that whatever the V control potential is, that's what is going to be applied to the gate. And since both ends, right, of the, the source of the FET and the other end of the power supply here are both at ground, whatever this potential is, is your VGS. It's just that simple. So if I set V control to zero, then VGS is zero. And as we just saw, that should give us maximum gain. So the RD over here is going to be 5K and probably at 50K, around 4.5K or so. But let's do a, a, a little simulation on this and see what we get, right? So this should be our maximizing value for the gain. So we'll do a little transient analysis here. All right, so... The small green uh, uh, sine wave here is the input signal. That's our 10 millivolt peak signal. And you can see here's 100. So yeah, there's 10 millivolts, right? This is our input. And then the maroon 
is the output. So we see the expected inversion, and we have a sizable signal here. Here's 100, there's 150, so probably somewhere in the 120 millivolt range. We can get a cursor out here just to check, and we're getting 122-ish. Uh, so we have a gain of about 12, right? Now, we turn around and we change the value of the control. So I'm going to bring this to a volt. Now, this is in fact negative one volt, right? Because of the sort of uh, flip, the way I've drawn in the uh, power supply here, right? So this is in fact negative one volt. Let's redo this. This should push the operation point down further towards VGS off, which means shallower slope, smaller GM, smaller gain. All right, notice, if you just said, hey, it got bigger, notice the scale over here has changed. Maximum now is 100 millivolts instead of 200 millivolts. So before, you know, we had 122 or something like that. Now clearly it's less than 100, right? We're coming in here, that's 75, so we're probably somewhere in the 80s for this one. Uh, 85 and change. Okay, let's go again. Put in two volts again, negative two volts on gate source. Run this up, see what we get. Okay, again, the scale has changed. Here's 50 millivolts max. So our peak is coming in at uh, 41 and a half, basically. All right, so as this magnitude grows, the gain is going down, 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 down. Now, if we go far enough, all right, I'm just going to put in, oh, let's say 2.7. If we go far enough, we're going to turn this thing right off. Now, if I come in and look at the 5458, and I'm going to check its parameters here, the threshold voltage, this is VGS off. This is showing up as a negative 2.8802 volts. That's what the model is using. All right. So I just said 2.7 for control. So this should give us a very small GM. And there, therefore a very small gain. In fact, right, there's V load the maroon. We can see that the gain is actually less than one. All right, so it's maybe, I don't know, 0.8 or so, right? Now, what happens if we go beyond the value of uh, VGS off, the magnitude? Well, I'll just throw in three volts, okay? This should turn the, the FET off completely. In other words, the GM should be zero, and therefore the gain should be zero. And boom, there you go, all right? Your V load, there's nothing there. I mean, if you zoom in on it, well, you'll probably see a little residual, but basically it's gone. Okay. All right. Now, the second thing is you might be thinking, I don't want to deal with a negative control voltage. I would much rather have a positive control voltage. How can we do that? Well, that's a very simple fix. We just take the power supply and we swing it over here into the source. Now remember, you need a negative gate source. So the gate over here is just going through the RG value, the two meg, to ground. So this is basically sitting at zero volts. And we're just going to apply a positive potential to the source. So we're going to bring the source more positive than the gate. So VGS is negative. So with this V control at zero, I should get the exact same result that we got on the very first trial. And lo and behold, right, we had like 122, and I believe that was this right here. Oh, look at that. That's perfect, right? I'm just going to go back and forth between those two. All right, the original had the, the ledger on it, uh, the legend, excuse me, and here's this one. So we're getting the same exact uh, result as far as the output. And again, if I, uh, you know, just put some middle-of-the-road value here, like 2, we'll get some lower gain. All right, so here we are back at that, uh, oh, you know, 30-ish, whatever the heck it works out to that we saw before. Okay, well, 41. I think this was 41 and a half or something when we searched around. Whatever, okay? 
obviously it's dropping down. All right? And of course, if we go off to the VGS off value, the magnitude there, three volts, theoretically we should get that at 2.9. All right. Let's see how good our model does. Yep, there it is. It's gone. It's all gone. There ain't, there ain't nothing there. There's nothing there. It's, it's gone. Well, is there nothing there? You know, let's just zoom in. Why? Because I'm just that curious kind of guy. Well, it still looks like there's nothing there. Can we do it again? Well, I guess we could. Oh, look, there's a residual. It, you know, looks like it's <laughs> it's a fraction of a microvolt. We're down into the nanovolts at this point. So safe to say, you know, we're getting a nice output. All right. So that's how you would do it with a positive control voltage rather than a negative control voltage. But, you know, VCAs by themselves, voltage controlled amplifiers are useful devices in that you have a programmable gain. You can control the gain of the amplifier through this external voltage. So we use these for things like uh, automatic gain control. We can use them for things like uh, an audio compressor limiter kind of circuit to sort of smooth out gain when signals are really large to sort of reduce the gain so we don't overload following stages. We can keep volume levels fairly consistent. So there are definitely um, some good uses for, for uh, voltage controlled amplifiers. All right. Okay, so that pretty much gives us a quick cover. Oh, before I forget, there is one there is one other thing you might ask about, and that is, could you put a uh, RS value in here, a, a, uh, a resistor, a source resistor for swamping? The answer is yes, you can do that. Um, you will lose maximum gain. You know, in our case, we had a max gain of about 12. So if you throw that in there, you know, you are going to lose your, your max gain. Um, Remember, the gain equation for that is a negative GMRD divided by 1 plus GMRS. So the bigger the RS value is, the more gain you're going to lose. Um, you might want to do that to control the range of, of the control voltage, especially if you have a small power supply and you run the risk of possibly saturating the transistor. Um, but generally speaking, you know, we're going to be looking at fairly small signals so that you don't overdrive the transistor. So this configuration actually works out pretty well, usually. But there are much more, much, 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 much more complex versions of VCAs that have other characteristics uh, than this one. But this is just a, a good sort of simple, good place to start, right? So if you have any questions on this, put them down in the comments. We'll see you next time. Take care.